Hello, SLOConf. Uh, my name is Kit Merker, and I'm with Noble9. And I want to share with you what I've learned over the last year leading SLO boot camps. I wanted to learn about SLOs. You know, we were starting Noble9 over the last couple of years, and before we had a product, I wanted to understand how SRE teams um, were socializing the concept of SLOs. I wanted to learn how SLOs could help organizations make better decisions and how they could determine uh, SLOs based on the risk profile of the services that they were running. And in order to do that, I figured the best way to learn was to teach. And if I could actually turn myself into a boot camp instructor and take teams through this, um, that I would learn a lot more about how uh, teams work together to define and rationalize SLOs. And so that's exactly what I did. Um, the boot camp itself, my goal with it was really to help have better conversations about reliability within these teams. I wanted it to be something that was a low time commitment, that was very hands on, that was practical, something where people were working on real services that they actually cared about and interacted with on a daily basis, maybe that they were carrying the pager for. Um, and we wanted to create something as an outcome from the boot camp that the team would actually use. And one of the interesting pieces of feedback that I got from a lot of people in the boot camp is it always feels fast, but in a good way, because people are learning new skills and they're learning new information and they're they're doing something they haven't done before. Um, they're really getting uh, kind of new pathways burnt into their brains, and so that that feeling of speed was uh, I think was really a cool uh, signal that you know it's working. Um, there's a lot of cat herding involved in running a boot camp. You got to get the team to come together and be prepared and focus and be in the room, you know, not distracted. And so I spent a lot of time kind of tuning the logistics and making sure that the roles and responsibilities of people participating in the boot camp were really clear. Um, last, I think it was last February, we had the first that was in 2020. Uh, February 2020, we had the first SLO boot camp, and it was in person in Seattle, where I live. Uh, we had two different services running together, and then they worked independently and presented their findings to the whole group. We had a nice, you know, fancy dinner, and we gave people books and T-shirts. I'm actually wearing the T-shirt from the first SLO boot camp right now, and that was a lot of fun. It was a big time commitment for people, and then 2020 kind of got in the way, and we couldn't really do in person anymore. Um, we moved to a virtual format for the boot camp, and uh, this actually allowed us to run more boot camps with teams. Uh, but we had to change the way we did it. Uh, if you've ever been on Zoom meetings for a long time, you know two days of Zoom meetings just doesn't work. So we we limited the time to two hours per session. Um, we we invited cross functional teams, so we made sure that we had representatives from Dev, PM, Test, uh, and of course SRE uh, collaborating together to develop S, uh, the SLOs. Um, we had you know, a limit of seven people. Of course, we didn't have dinner. We moved the uh, book to a PDF format, and uh, we sent everybody the Implementing SLOs book. And of course, uh, unfortunately, we didn't send people T-shirts. We, we, uh, we had to streamline the agenda. We had to really focus in on the core essentials that mattered to, uh, to make the, the boot camp successful. And the agenda, uh, the, two, the agenda for the boot camp, for the virtual boot camp, we did it over two days in two hour sessions. Um, starts off with some uh, intro to reliability concepts, introduction to the service level objective uh, kind of verbiage and, and terminology. Um, and then we took use cases from the actual service and convert them into SLIs as a team. Um, from there, we take those SLIs and we try to figure out what SLOs are achievable and also what SLOs are aspirational. And by using a, a free resource from Google, we went through and, develop, and figured out what risks uh, would impact our ability to meet the SLOs that we, that we wanted. And um, from there, we're actually able to develop a reliability roadmap where we take the uh, individual uh, risks and figure out mitigations for them. And I'll talk a little bit more about how that works in a second. Um, after we get through the risk analysis piece, then we start talking about how to make SLOs have true meaning in the organization and develop an error budget policy um, that the team can really buy into and take back to their organization to help socialize the idea of SLOs and to also um, have rules of the road for uh, how they'll uh, make decisions based on error budgets. Uh, just some example slides I pulled from the the presentation we used for the boot camp. You know, we talk about um, human error in complex systems. Some great uh, material from Sidney Decker uh, on how organizations uh, uh, fail in complex situ uh, complex systems. Um, talking about the the spectrum of reliability uh, from low to high and how SLAs, SLOs, and SLIs and error budgets kind of interact together to create uh, happy customers and productive teams. Um, we also go through a lot of different definitions of different types of SLOs, 
uh, availability and latency being some of them, but we, we've also done boot camps where we've talked about throughput SLOs and even quality SLOs and, and other kind of more, uh, more advanced SLO types. And one of the other really important areas that we spend some time on is the measurement of uh, SLIs. Where do we actually measure the data to determine SLIs, whether that's through um, synthetics, uh, load balancer monitoring, or even client-side monitoring, and how those different uh, approaches to gathering SLIs um, influence our understanding of the system. One of the coolest uh, parts of the bootcamp is the risk assessment. And this is a free resource that Google's uh, customer reliability engineering team created, and there's a link to it right here. Um, what it is is a spreadsheet that lets you uh, look at a service and think about the risks and quantify those risks to determine what is an achievable SLO. And uh, I've added a few tips and tricks to how for how that uh, can be used to then build a reliability roadmap, where you could basically take the benchmark of what you have today and you look for each risk and say, okay, what could we do to mitigate it? And this is where most of the aha moments happen in the boot camp, where people see, okay, this one risk that has been hurting our, our reliability, if we can just you know add a monitor here or add some redundancy or um, add some additional testing, uh, can actually have a huge impact on their uh, service reliability. And the, the teams often will take the, that input um, and go and implement it right after the boot camp because they, they find these um, really quick improvements that they can make. And this really helps, I think, galvanize the team around uh, the value of using this tool and exercise. And, and I've even heard uh, teams are using this now you know, after the fact they're coming back and revisiting it and improving their SLOs uh, over time. Um, we've done the boot camp now for a number of companies, uh, all different uh, kind of uh, industries and sectors and, and team sizes. Uh, the boot camp, uh, you know, kind of limited to five to seven people uh, working on a service, but each of these companies, you know, kind of had uh, uh, lots of different service teams that were interested in doing it, and some were even jealous that they weren't the, the first team to, to do it. Uh, I wish I could share all the logos with you, but unfortunately I can't. We also tracked the satisfaction, uh, and we're using a, the a net promoter score concept, which basically asks the question, on a scale of one to 10, how likely are you to recommend the SLO bootcamp to a friend or colleague? And uh, as any score over zero is basically a good score, and 43 is what we came out to from all the respondents here. So uh, really positive, and we've used the feedback surveys to improve the process over time and make the bootcamp uh, even even better. Um, the, the, the key things that I learned through doing this, through all these uh, boot camp sessions I've personally been involved in, you know, SLOs are a team sport. It's all about making decisions. And when we work in organizations, um, no one person can just decide what the, the reliability goal should be. It really takes input from everybody um, to find that correct balance for the service. Sometimes we want to focus on the tools, and the tools don't really solve the story. It's really about understanding customers and users. Um, and I think teams should are well served if they just start somewhere. You know, just get started defining the goals, figure out what you think matters, and go from there. Um, there's a lot of skeptics about SLOs and error budgets in particular. And if you can get them to speak up and share their concerns and, and to be critical, it actually drives a lot of um, learning and understanding because we, we start to see where the biases are and where the concerns are. And that helps drive, I, I believe, uh, in overall improvement um, and also helps with buy-in. If people have a chance to kind of speak up in a safe uh, world about, well, why do we need to do these things? Um, it really does make a difference for uh, in embracing that kind of new way of doing things. Um, we we also, for me, every time we kind of go into theoretical, it's so funny. I get this feedback after the boot camp that they really appreciate the practical nature of it. Uh, it's it's not about theory. It's about hands-on. It's about trying it out. And the theory can support the practice, but you really need to have the practice uh, of the services and users and customers. Um, my last kind of tip takeaway for SLOs is if you can start from use cases, think about the user stories, uh, think about the the way that your services uh, interact with each other and you know maybe even you know, like anthropomorphize them into thinking about them as users, right? This service uses this other service. What does it need? What does it expect? Um, that's a great way to bring your product managers into the into the SLO creation process. Um, thinking about user journeys and the customer experience is a great place to start with SLOs because uh, they give you such a, a critical view of the customer experience. And our goal here is to run you know, efficient services that customers love. Um, we need to think about our customers and users when we're defining our service level objectives. Uh, that's all I've got. So I want to say thank you to everybody who came to SlowConf. Thanks for uh, your attention. Uh, please do follow me on Twitter at Kit Merker. And if you want to learn more about Bootcamp or you think it might be interesting for your organization, hit me up at bootcamp at noble9.com. Thanks a lot.